Hello, welcome to our new video. Today we're going to be fitting the continuous ink system to the new Canon Pixma MG8150. So at the moment I've got the printer switched on. Uh, I'm going to open the lid. So this video is going to be—it's going to be quite difficult to do to get you to be able to see what I want to because I can't hire the lid anymore. Uh, but I will do my best with this video. So let's just move the camera. So the print head at the moment is come to the ink cartridge change position. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the print head, uh, remove it. So just with a piece of paper or a piece of tissue or something, just pop that at the front of your printer. So you need to lift the grey lever up like that and then tilt the print head towards you at 45 degrees and then just lift it straight out. It is a consumable so it's designed to be uh, taken in and out. So I'm just going to adjust the camera so I've popped it there on the print head so you can see. So let's just get this straight. That's better. Right, so within your accessory pack there are some silicon seals uh, and some tweezers. Silicon seals look like, look like this. Uh, they need to be placed round each one of the nozzles on the print head. So it's quite important these small silicon seals. The purpose of these is to perform an airtight seal around the cartridge itself when the SIS system is installed in the printer. So not all of the not all of the sellers sell them with that with these seals, but they are quite important. If you've bought a system without these seals, it's likely that uh, you will run into the problems with the future with air in your line. So such a small part, but it is quite important. So I'm just going to pop them all on. So on this machine, there's uh, there's six, and, and do be careful when you're placing them around the around the nozzles not to touch the uh, metal nozzle itself. So they will actually only go on one way. They are shaped to fit. And the last one itself. So do check when you're inserting them that there's no, uh, once you've taken them out of the pack, that there's no debris or dust or anything on them. But this should be fine once they've been taken straight out of the pack. Right. So I've installed the silicon seals now. Uh, so I'm going to install the print the print head back into the printer. So again, I'm going to put it in at 45 degrees, like so, and then and then I'm going to just tilt it back. So you don't need to have the arm raised when you're putting it back in. You can just get it in. So I'll pop the print head back into the printer. So I'm going to power the printer down now uh, at the moment because during the installation I need to be able to move the print head to the right and to the left and it's awkward to do that uh, when the printer is switched on because there's a lot of resistance so that's quite important that you power your printer off at that point there so I'm going to move the camera back just so we can get a bit of a better shot so for this for this system here I've all, at the moment we've only got the systems without the chips. Uh, I've already transferred the chips from the original cartridges. Uh, it does tell you in the manual how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. At some point in the future we will advertise when we've got the systems with the chips. So I need to remove the orange caps from these cartridges. So I'm just going to twist them all off. So it's quite important when you do this that you keep the cartridges above the height of the continuous ink system. Doing that will mean that no ink comes out of the cartridge. And then what I'm going to do is, when I've taken them all off, I'm going to flip them upside down and put them in as a full set straight into the printer. So I've removed all the orange caps and now I'm just going to spin them over and pop them straight into the printer and click them all into place. Let's remove this paper. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I've popped all them in. So the next thing we need to do is to fit the uh, ink line to the roof of the printer itself. So part way down the ink line you'll see uh, a, a clip. Uh, and on the back of that clip there's some green backing tape on this one. There's white, 
uh, but I put that one on earlier. So you will have green black backing tape on this. So you need to remove the green backing tape from that clip and um, the actual clip location gets fitted. So I tried to raise the lid on this machine so I could show you a bit better but I couldn't. So if you run your hand from the back of the printer you'll feel two ridges. So you'll feel one ridge there and then if you keep coming up you'll feel the second ridge here at the front. So the actual location of this clip it needs to be 18 and a half centimeters. So it's 18 and a half centimeters from the side of the printer on from the right hand side of the printer lid. So I'm just going to adjust the camera just so you can see where I'm taking my measurement from. So it's actually 18 and a half centimeters from here. That is the actual to the edge of the clip. And that is 18 and a half is to this edge of the clip, not that edge, this edge of the clip, the closest to you. So the actual location of it, so when you rub your hand up at the back and you'll get to the first ridge and then it steps up to a level. So I will try and move the camera in a, mid in a minute. Uh, so it's actually on the second level, so at 18 and a half centimetres. So I'll, I'll attach this and then I'll try manually uh, moving the camera so you can see. So I've removed the backing tape from it and I'm going to attach it 18 and a half centimetres in. Now I've already marked this printer so I know where where 18 and a half centimetres is. So I've attached it and I've pressed it down firmly. So I'm going to try and adjust the camera now so that you can see. So if it wobbles a bit, please excuse me. So you can see where I've where I've put it there. It's basically I've come up from the first, there's the first, there's the first ridge at the bottom here and I've just come up to the next step so it is detailed in the manual but I've just tried to uh, to give you a camera shot so you can see what it's like yeah so you'll have to excuse the shaky camera but it's more important that you can actually see where I'm fitting the clip than the camera actually shaking itself right so Part way down the ink line as well, you've got another green clip, uh, so you need to remove the backing tape off this, and then you've got a large square bit here at the side, so it actually gets fitted, just taped on the side, just at the side there. So I'm gonna, again, I'm going to remove the green backing tape from this, and I'm going to attach it just at the side and I'm going to push it up firmly just so it gets a good addition. So the ink line will actually exit the front of the printer down here once I've closed the lid. So also within your accessory pack you have this uh, double shaped clip like this. So the actual location of this one, so you have the hinge over here, so it just pops in, it doesn't clip anywhere, it just pops in front of the hinge loose like that. So when you actually close the lid, that's as far as it will normally go during its operation uh, and that's being stopped by the clip so that's deliberate and it's quite important that you put that clip in place right so for the next step uh, we have the uh, printer lid bypass sensor so it's going to be really difficult to show you this one on the camera because it's difficult to get in but I will try so over here on the right hand side where my finger is coming in just here uh, there appears to be like a, a plastic key shaped uh, round bit and then the top bit's uh, a bit, bit rectangular but it's a bit like a key shape so with a new accessory pack you have this spare rubber plug so that needs to be inserted into the printer lid bypass sensor the key shape bit just here so but actually when you insert it there's no point inserting the plug into the back part of the hole. You, it's a bit like a key. You have to insert it into the front part. So I'm going to pop this one in. I'm sorry I can't show you this. It, it's, there's just no way for the lid to uh, open for me to lid to open enough for me to uh, show you that. So I'm going to pop this in. Uh, and again, you know that that bit is detailed in the manual. There is a picture that shows you exactly where to fit it. It's just going to be too difficult to show it you on this video. So I've popped it in. I will try adjusting the camera so you can see if I can... There, so you can see it in there at the back. It's at the front part on the right-hand side. 
Right, so we've installed the printer lid sensor, uh, the cable, everything's installed now. So the next thing we, need, we can do, we can close the lid on this printer and we'll move over to the continuous ink system itself. So the continuous ink system on top we have, let's just adjust this. Right, so on top of the continuous ink system you've got these 12 plugs, there's six small flat ones. These need to be removed because that's where your air filter is going to go. So remove the six small flat plugs. So it's very important with continuous ink systems that they stop on the same level as the base of the printer. Please don't raise them in the air because if you do, it will flood your printer. So within your accessory pack, you have these things, these air filters. So they have a small stubby fat end and a narrow pointed end. So they need to be inserted into the holes the small flat plug holes with the pointed end facing upwards. All six of them. And that's how you install that. So before I actually continue, you'll note there's a, a roller on the side of the continuous ink system. So this is like a travel roller. So it must now be put in the up position and it will stay in the up position all the time the continuous ink system is installed. The only time you need to put that roller back down is if you're removing the system. So the cable, it, it can, it, the cable's long enough for it to reach around the side here, pop it over on the right hand side, or you can fit it around the front, but it won't reach around the back and it won't reach around to the left hand side of the printer. It's got to be the right hand side. So I'm going to pop the reservoir here on the right hand side, and now I'm going to switch the printer back on and uh, we'll run a few prints. So I've powered the printer on and it's uh, it's likely it's going to run through uh, it's going to run through a couple of head cleans now uh, and then we'll we'll do a scan of an image and uh, get a print off so you can have a look. So I do normally on my videos like to be able to open the printer lid so that you can uh, you can see it actually moving itself, but with this one I, I can't open the lid on this one. I could open it slightly, but it's not going to be enough for you to see it actually moving from right to left and left to right. So it's not hooked up to a printer at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan. Uh, I'm going to scan an image. So I'm going to pop the pop this scanner lid open, and I'm going to scan this City Ink Express mouse mat. So it did tell me that time that I didn't turn the power off correct last time. Last time I turned the power off at the printer, uh, which is quite not, uh, turned the power off at the wall socket. So uh, that was deliberate. If you switch your power off part way through on the machine, the printhead will go back over to the right. So at the start of the video where I told you to switch the machine off, it's important that you switch it off at the power and don't switch it off by pressing the on off button on the printer. Right, so I switched it back on now. Uh, and now we're going to do uh, a copy. Right, so it's saying processing, please wait momentarily. So it may decide it wants to do a head clean first with it being a new set of cartridges. I did one yesterday on an MG6150 and that uh, that wanted to do a head clean which, which extended the video length by about three minutes. So we'll see what this one does. <coughs> so as you can see on this, this machine it, it's uh, quite straightforward to fit the ink system. It's probably taking me maybe ten minutes actually. When you take out the waiting time for the printer and everything else. Excuse me. Yeah, so it's running through a head clean now, so we're just going to have to wait a minute. It's a bit of a pain when you're doing these videos. So. so 
So I will be able to open the lid slightly to let you have a look. And hopefully you can you can see in there just while it's it's waiting. I might actually be able to print or run a head cleat or run a print while it's like that so you can see it moving from uh, left to right but we'll have a go anyway. So yeah remember you don't have to have the printer lid open when you're printing on this machine. I've only done this just so you can see it, how it's actually moving itself. So there are a couple of checks uh, in the instruction manual uh, moving the print head left to right just before you finally switch it on but I've skipped them in this just to keep the video time down. So what I'll do is I'll let it come off with its first print with the printer lid open uh, and then I'll drop the printer lid because realistically that's going to be your normal use usage with the lid closed. So at the moment it's still running through its cleaning cycle. I think we're nearly there now. Yeah, so it's doing its uh, its first print. So all I've done is I've just popped the mask mat under the scanner. Just so you can see how it's working. So for the second print, I'm going to close the lid. Because realistically, that's how you're going to use it normally. And that's how you fit the continuous ink system to the new Canon PIXMA MG8150.